All right. Bismillah. Go ahead and click live. Just a oh, I always it do that. So I hear my voice. Give me just a minute. Okay, so I am not a pro on live streaming, clearly, um, but alhamdulillah, I am so happy to have you all here. We are live on Facebook as well, so we're happy to have our Facebook viewers on as well. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, jazakumullah khairan for joining us. My name is Dr. Shaza Khan and I am the Executive Director of the Islamic Schools League of America. We are super excited to have you joining us today for ISLA's Back to School event. Um, so some of you may have already started school. Some of you may be starting after Labor Day, depending on where you are. Whatever the case is, we really appreciate and admire your commitment to bringing your students Islamically relevant, um, meaningful, engaging curriculum. So Jazakumullah Khairan for joining us. We don't have a lot of time, so Bismillah, let us get started. Bismillah rahman rahim I wanna start with just a one minute intro of ISLA. Um, if this is the first time you're hearing about us, the Islamic Schools League of America is a nonprofit that supports full-time Islamic schools. I thought of a new logo and let's see if it flies with everybody uplifting and elevating Islamic schools, one educator at a time. Yeah, Sonia has given me the thumbs up. One of the things we really focus on is networks, networking and relationships. And that's why we really care about you all being here today. And we invite you to reach out to us if you haven't before, talk to us one-on-one. -on -one. We'd like to get to know you. What are you doing in your Islamic school? What are the pains that you have? And how can our organization support you? Currently, ISLA's focus is on research, resources, and professional development. So we're so um, excited to now move right into our presenters. Um, and we will be able to move around. I'm sorry about that. Um, Sister Marguerite, we're going to start if she's here. Sister Marguerite, and if you don't mind, we're going to ask everybody there, Sister Marguerite. Assalamu alaikum. So we have joining us first, we've got a number of different organizations who've got about five to seven minutes, just so that I don't take over their talk time. I'm going to let them get into describing more about the organization and the pre curricular resources that they have for you all. And so um, without too much more, I would like to introduce Sister Marguerite Hill, the Executive Director of Muslim ARC Anti-Racism Collaborative. Um, Sister Marguerite, take the mic. Thank you. I think we're getting a little bit of background in the um, a little bit of interference. So if everyone could put their microphones on mute because we will have following me some really, really brilliant and exciting um, presentations from resources that I truly value. Um, so just to be quick, um, Muslim ARC, the, the inspiration for doing Muslim anti-racism collaborative comes from my work in teaching at Islamic schools. And what I found was that our children were inheriting dominant narratives, but also um, whatever our like their parents had internalized. And so we adopted a kind of chicken and the egg approach of educating adults, but also creating curriculum and resources for K through 12. Um, so for the, our long-term work, we do plan on releasing more resources both um, some free resources and um, some more extensive resources for uh, professional development. But in this case, um, for our work here is where we will um, talk about how you can access our free resources and um, utilize our website, even though we are going through a transition. So let me see if I'm able to do a kind of cr a screen share to show you where quickly um, where you can access our resources and also the page where you'll be able to, to find it um, as we update our website so that um, our community can navigate it. So Muslim Mark, we do have um, 
a few tiers are one website that we have available for the public. Um, you don't need to sign in and that allows you to access and navigate um, our resources page where we have, and if you scroll down, you could see um, some of the papers where they're downloadable research findings and white papers. Um, we have toolkits and articles, so shorter resources. So clicking on the papers that we have um, in this, this part of our website, um, we have our first intra-Muslim ethnic relations study. And so this is available for, for um, people of all ages. And I think it would be really great as a resource and a reference for from middle school to college students. So, um, and we'll publish additional um, publications and research papers that we have. We also have soft Islamophobia, which is also frequently re referenced um, in uh, research papers. Other resources, they include our toolkits. And so these ones like with our uh, Black Lives Matter for Muslim toolkit, we have, um, there are some quick lesson plans, um, there's action steps, and even our Muslim, uh, Muslim Arcs Ramadan anti-racism guide. So tips that we can do every day um, to be anti-racist. So we'll continue to publish those. And in fact, in 2023, we'll have more as, as our team has grown larger and we have Dr. Alia um, available and she's producing great um, toolkits and research papers. And so finally we have our articles. And so this one has also very similar to, um, to the toolkits, but they include kind of more lengthier writings and steps. And usually most of our uh, work has quick action steps that whether it's for imams or students that they could take. Another place that um, is also very, um, that is available for educators is looking at some of our press release statements and um, people can look for what we have on YouTube and social media as we have resources and programs that people can access and incorporate in, in their learning. Like I said, in the next year or so, we will be doing more curriculum for K-12 and releasing some of our um, more developed curriculum, like our All From Adam curriculum. And so the way that you can um, stay in touch and access those is to sign up for our newsletter. And I'll share that link to sign up for our newsletter um, in the chat below. Um, probably maybe like I'll do it right after I get logged, like I'll let the next speaker talk, but I'll share, share that link. But I just wanted to be really quick. I'm just, I think the work that you're doing is really great. I believe in Islamic education. My daughter goes to a wonderful Islamic school and I'm really happy to share the lesson plans that I've utilized in her classrooms and with students of all ages. So I see Lisa in the background, like she's, she's, she's called me to do um, <laughs> workshops with the students at IOK. And it's always a lot of fun to work with our youth. So just Whoa, Marjorie, <laughs> you just offered something huge, man. That, that, yeah. That's a gem right there. You just offered to share lesson plans yeah. um, on, on what you've done. That's exciting, Marjorie. So first of all, Jazakallah Khairan for this really yeah, important work. We are huge fans of Muslim art, much, much needed in our community and a really special um, approach really grounded in Islam and, and the Dean. And we really appreciate it, Sister Marguerite. Jazakallah Khairan for oh, yeah. taking us through the website and um, we'll let you pop into the web, into the chat, uh, how they can sign up and stay in touch. And we'll also be sending everybody here a link um, to resources, inshallah, following up. So Jazakum al khairan again, Sister Margri, for that yeah. wonderful presentation and for joining us today. Jazakum al khair. Next, we'd like to introduce um, Rachel Davidson, Davison Humphreys, Director of Outreach at Bill of Rights Institute and Adam Brickley, Manager of Civic Engagement Projects at the Bill of Rights Institute. Um, Rachel leads a team that leads outreach initiatives, that develops new programs and products, and she's going to be speaking. Uh, we connected right away. I was like, are you a middle school teacher? And she was like, are you a middle school teacher? And we we're like, yes, that is what it is. So Rachel, really excited to have you share with us um, one really special project to you about Bill of Rights Institute, which you felt would be really meaningful to Islamic schools 
And um, you and Adam are welcome to take the mic and I will stop sharing so that you can also share your screen if needed. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it is it is such an absolute pleasure. I am so honored uh, to be to be with you all today. So I am going to share my screen, my PowerPoint. We can't do anything without PowerPoint these days. Uh, so there, he should be able to see the full screen now. Um, so like I said, my name is Rachel Davison Humphreys. It's wonderful to meet you. We are so excited to share with you about what BRI is quickly, and then we'll get into the My Impact Challenge. Um, but for those of you that aren't familiar with us, the Bill of Rights Institute mission is to teach civics. We equip students and teachers to live the ideals of a free and just society. Uh, and we seek to do that um, by by having an America where we more perfectly realize the promise of liberty and equality expressed in the Declaration of Independence. This calls for civic education that helps students examine the story of our country and exercise the skills of citizenship. Now, we have a bunch of promises, and I wanted to put these up here because in my research about Islamic schools, which I wasn't as familiar with, I saw a lot of overlap with the missions and character building that, that Islamic schools does. And so if you're curious about this, you can, you can see it on our website. But BRI really is about self-governance. That's the core value that we have. And everything we do is based on what we call founding principles and virtues. Uh, and we use teachers and scholars and learning design and these founding principles to design all of our resources. We mostly focus on learning experiences and content. Everything BRI does is free for teachers. So everything on our website, we have over 4,000 resources on our website, is free for you to use. We have over 2,000 primary sources. We work with scholars around the country because this is our mission, this is our vocation, this is our passion, we teach civics. But I wanted to share with you this idea of the founding principles that BRI de designs all of our resources around. We start with that kind of natural rights foundation and build up to the expressed rights. Um, and so as you're thinking about how you integrate US history into your courses, we want you to think about the, the Bill of Rights Institute as being a place you can go that really has a principled approach. <laughs> Not only do we think about the principles, but we also integrate virtues and vices into everything we do and thinking through those kinds of, you know, character that's necessary for self-governance. And again, I know that that fits with a lot of what Islamic schools are passionate about. Our curricular resources run the gamut. Um, I'll talk about a few of them real quick and then get into my impact challenge. We have a, a free textbook. It's a digital textbook with over 400 components on all of US American history. You can go find it. 30 different point counterpoint essays where scholars speak to each other in dialogue. Uh, really fantastic resource. The most recent resource that we developed is called Plainest Demands of Justice, Documents for Dialogue on the African American Experience. And that's 98 different primary sources, five lessons, 40 historical profiles um, that were all designed for teachers to use in the classroom. We actually have two different reading levels with all 90, with uh, about 50 of those primary sources. You can find them on our website. Uh, and we most recently designed the Building Blocks of Prosperity, thinking about economics from a prosperity lens. We partnered with Hoover Institution in, um, in, in, at, in California. And so we have all of these resources freely available for you. And I want to just make sure you knew about them. But the thing I'm really here to talk about in the next three minutes, keeping an eye on my time, is the My Impact Challenge. So the My Impact Challenge is a citizenship contest of the Bill of Rights Institute. Adam just linked you in the uh, in the chat there. Um, and really what it is, is ultimately we want to be the science fair for civics. We want to have that level of energy around student design, student agency driven, community oriented projects. So we've decided that we're going to help build that world by having the My Impact Challenge, which is the National Civics Contest. Our current contest will open on September 11th, National Day of Service, where we think about what it means to be a part of a community. And the submission deadline will be on the 21st of May this year. We have over $40,000 in prizes. We gave away, uh, we, we ended up giving away 14 prizes last year. We were only supposed to give away 10, but we couldn't decide because they were all so good. Um, but we support these activities. Um, so it's a contest. Students have to submit, uh, submit, um, submit things for the contest. But I, what we wanted to do is the big change vision is that, you know, young people have so much capacity. They have so much ability. They have so much knowledge. 
And often they're tasked with this idea of finding a passion. But for the Bill of Rights Institute is where does that talent and gladness, where does that passion meet a need in the world? Where is that where is that point and how can we support young people in solving something? Um, so our, our curriculum, they, they involve constitutional principles, the entrepreneurial spirit, civic unity, um, and constructive engagement with civil society, looking at both governmental and non-governmental solutions to societal problems. So we have a six unit curriculum that will help students design a project. It looks at design thinking and historical lessons, looking at citizenship and contribution, charity and citizenship, government and citizenship, entrepreneurship and citizenship. It's all service design thinking. And then all the rubrics for the contest are freely available. So if you are thinking that your student would want to submit this project, then you can kind of see what the criteria would be for winning. The application is actually really simple. Um, it's a project report. So they design a project or you guys already have a kind of club that's doing this sort of work in the community or a, uh, an organ. Um, you have you have this organized already. Those can submit as well. There's no there's no restriction on those. But if your students need support designing projects, we have that for you as well. So a project report, multimedia, and then the last piece is a principles essay, a 1200 word essay detailing how the project exemplifies principle and virtue in this in their community. So it really takes this idea and says, how am I building a better community through this project and having students kind of do that metacognition. There are prizes everywhere. We have lots of them. Um, and even the, the teachers uh, who win are also being supported because we know that no young person is doing this alone. Uh, and then we have a big public uh, public fair, you know, eventually we want this to be on C-SPAN and ESPN and like the spelling bee, but we're not there yet. We're only in year two. It's just me and Adam, uh, but we'll get there. We'll get there. You watch. Uh, yeah. And we want Islamic schools to be a part of that. So That's right. We're going to be part of this story, Rachel. <laughs> I want it. I want it. We're already getting a lot of excitement, you know. LA. Yeah, I see that. I'm so like, Rachel, like, take out. a breath though. <laughs> What's that? Because this was a lot, and I'm sure everybody's kind of like worried. What are we going to, I, I missed something, right? So no worries, people. We are going to have a survey at the end of this where you will indicate what questions you have. If you have questions, of course, you can chat with the person in the chat um, after they present. And Rachel, we're going to pass these questions along to you, to Marjorie, to anyone else here who's a speaker. And you don't get, obviously 10 minutes isn't enough, seven minutes isn't enough time. So, um, and then here are some other ways that you can connect. Rachel's got her personal um, email address right there too. Rachel, any Thank last you words? Guys. Sorry, to, sorry, I'm, I'm just very excited. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. We're super excited too, Rachel. This is really um, wonderful. And one of the things that I loved when I spoke to you first was that I really could see that it's not a closed definition. It's very open, very flexible. And I really appreciated that. By the way, everybody, as you know, and I know that's why you showed up on a Wednesday evening, we don't just have any speaker come to you because we Googled them and found them on. Like these are people and organizations we know and trust and ISLA has developed relationships with and is continuing to develop relationships with. So we really appreciate the trust and we honor your time and energy. So without further ado, I'm going to move to the next, and really this is rapid fire today, guys, because I know on a Wednesday evening or afternoon, you don't have a lot of time. So we're going rapid fire. I know it's a lot, but we're going to be able to, inshallah, take your questions and pass them along or help you get in touch with people afterwards. At this point, I'm really excited to introduce to you Sister Ruhi Yunus. Um, she's a nonprofit consultant and founder of r, &R Strategists. And she's also working with Unity Productions, um, Unity Productions Foundation on um, promoting the Unfold Your Own Myth workshops, which ISLA is also a partner of, and many of you may have also participated in a longer workshop um, just about a few weeks ago. So Ruhi, um, for those who weren't able to join, tell us more about Unfold Your Own Myth. What is this all about? Why and who in Islamic schools should be interested in this? 
Thank you, Shaza. I really appreciate that introduction. And I'm learning so much. I'm actually texting and sending links to other people I know that can benefit from what's here. So it just um, speaks to the amount of vetting and quality work that uh, Isla does to bring quality resources to the school. So I'm really honored to be here. Um, I really respect all of you as teachers and educators and how self selfless you work uh, with your schools. And um, I really honor that. So the way I'm going to start is I'd like to just take a moment and um, imagine. So I'm going to share this story with you so you can kind of sit back and see if you can envision it in your mind um, or you know, continue to watch me on Zoom. Um, so here we go. <clears throat> imagine a newly arrived immigrant named Dina from Syria. Dina is enrolled in an Islamic school for the seventh grade year. She transferred to an Islamic school after a bad experience in the public school system. Although surrounded by Muslims, she feels isolated as it has been difficult to connect in this new world. Teachers are noticing the trend of isolation among students post COVID and come across a resource endorsed by Isla. It's a four session workshop created by UPF called Unfold Your Own Myth. It's for young Muslims to find power in their personal stories. Students watch an exclusive access film called Lamia's Poem that explores the life of Rumi the poet and a present day Syrian refugee named Lamia. The students participate in sessions where they learn about and write spoken word, haiku, a Eurasia poem and journal. Through discussion and sharing, Dina finally is able to open up about her experiences. In exploring the material, teachers see how it can empower Muslims with immigrant parents from refugee backgrounds and even native born Muslims. The students are engaged in the ses sessions, excited to experience the next one. Teachers are impressed with the poetry and submit them to, P to UPF with parents permission. Several of the submissions are selected to be placed in a poetry publication, including Dina's. The principal and administration of the Islamic school are excited to share the development with parents and other stakeholders. Teachers are impressed by how well it caters to our community. UPF recognizes how hardworking and selfless the teachers are and does three things. One, compensates them. Second, provides a ready adaptable curriculum. And third, support from UPF every step of the way. Students receive a high quality journal to keep as well. This workshop fulfilled objectives in English, Islamic history, SEL, mental health, and Muslim identity. <clears throat> so this story I just shared with you is a combination of experiences that classes and youth groups have had with the Unfold Your Own Myth workshops. I share this with you to communicate the strong in impact this workshop can have on your school community. So I am go going to uh, ask you a question, uh, ask you all to answer a question. But before I do that, I want to show you a video that is going to recap uh, what I just shared with you. Unfold Your Own Myth is a workshop model designed for youth ages 12 to 18 to learn the art of poetry. Inspired by the new animated film, Lemia's Poem, which tells the story of Lemia, a young Syrian girl fleeing the violence of her community productions foundation so and its network of support youth ages 12 to 18 to learn the art of poetry. Inspired by the new animated film, Lemia's Poem, which tells the story of Lemia, a young Syrian girl fleeing the violence of her country and her magical rendezvous with the Muslim poet Jalaluddin Rumi, this project is designed to empower youth in finding their creative voice. With support from Unity Productions Foundation and its network of supporters and the Doris Duke Foundation for Islamic Art, Unfold Your Own Myth is a free resource that is perfect for English and social studies teachers, youth leaders, and individuals that work with immigrants and refugees. Over the course of four sessions, youth will learn how to write a journal, how to write a haiku, how to write an erasure poem, and how to write a spoken word poem. And to guide them, we have created instructional videos and guidebooks for each day that helps you lead the youth through specific exercises as they learn to write. 
Every participant, including you as the host, will receive a complimentary writing journal and a pamphlet to learn more about Rumi, the Syrian refugee crisis, and the various forms of poetry that Unfold features. With support from leading hip hop artists and poets, Unfold Your Own Myth will inspire youth to tap into their creative voice. Each workshop is eligible to screen UPF's new animated film, Lemia's Poem, prior to hosting the four workshops. Once you're done with your workshops, youth will have the opportunity to submit poems that they've written for possible publication in an Unfold Your Own Myth book project. In partnership with Kids Spirit, Unfold Your Own Myth will also publish the poems that youth have written on their website. To sign up and get going, visit upf.tv unfold. Our target audience are youth ages 12 to 18 with a focus on immigrant youth and American Muslim youth. Once on the website, go to the host a workshop page. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you for your couple minutes now. And my, my question for you is just knowing, you know, is this something that you can bring to your school? Is this something that you think there's a need and something that you would like to bring in? I would love to hear responses to that. So the way that you can um, you can mull on on mull, mull around on that. Um, ah, I see there's already a host here and scheduled for October. And Isla has been connecting us with different groups as well. So Musumatu, nice to hear from you, and um, great to hear that. And um, there's been a lot of great connections. Um, Isla has been um, been able to provide and bring visibility to this workshop. And I, I would love to hear from anyone else um, who would like to chat. I'm available. You can also email, as you know, um, the, your, you will get these resources that you need. Um, um, and thank you. I, I think I'll just stop there, Shaza, and let you take over. Thank you so much, Sister Ruhi. Yeah, we're so excited about um, the potential that this film has just to connect to our students' hearts and minds and be able to help them unfold their own myth and empower them to find their voices inshallah. So we're excited about this. Sister Lisa has placed a couple of links in the chat and inshallah, um, we hope that many of you will choose to sign up. Um, at this point, I would like to ask um, another organization, a speaker from an organization very dear to my heart personally and my Islam journey is Rabata, um, Sister Iman Rabat, this is apparently other Allah that her last name is Rabat, really, come on. I, I, she was de destined for this, mashallah. Or Rabata was really secretly named after her, but she can, she, she says it's not. Uh, she is the education director of Rabata. Sister Iman Rabat, tell us about some of the phenomenal resources that you all have at Rabata related to some really important areas and gaps in our Islamic studies and Islamic school um, curriculum. Sister Iman, salam alaikum, welcome. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Here at Rabata, we're dedicated to creating positive educational experiences. We want to create cultural change by those creative educational experiences. In particular, our youth, we want to provide them with role models that they can see, that they can identify with. It's wonderful to learn about Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and all of the amazing um, personalities that they that they encounter, but we also want them to know about the rich history and the vast history of uh, of Muslims as well. So I'm going to go ahead and oopsie, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just walk you through our website to show you where you can find these resources. If you visit rabata.org, r-a-b-a-t-a dot org, and you go to education. Now we operate under three circles: education, terbiya, and community. Today I'm just talking about education specifically teaching aids. All the aids on this page are absolutely free. And you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, different avenues that you can look at. Leadership and Legacy, Black History Month, Women's History Month, 15 Centuries of Women Scholars, uh, Sophia's Journal Teacher's Guide, as well as Africa's Not a Country, I'm gonna add an addendum to that, are the novels that we publish with Muslim characters. So I'm just gonna jump ahead. I've opened all my tabs so it wouldn't take any time to load. Our leadership and legacy curriculum highlights uh, positive uh, role models of Muslim women in the past. 
So we have number one posters, which you can see here, easily downloadable. You can print these for, they're all available free online. I've printed a set just so that you could take a look. In addition to this, to these, uh, we also have a map which shows you each woman. If you can see my ca my camera, you can see each woman and where she is, sh where she was in the world. Sorry, all of these are historical women. Um, it tells you a little bit more about each one. Um, sorry, just checking here. Each of these, I will show you more about this. If you go to the women's history, no, it is the same one. So sorry. We have entire an entire unit about each of these women. Nafisa Tahira, Nana Asma'u, Amina Silmi, Lubna of Qurtuba, Sister Clara Muhammad, Tun Fatima Hashim, Razia Sultan, Amra bint Abdul Rahman, Fatima Al Fahri. You can see they're they're from different periods of time periods from different continents. And for each one, we have an entire curriculum unit. Now I'm just showing you this here. This is available for free online. You can even download it on Teachers Pay, for, teachers pay Teachers for free. We have a unit for elementary and a unit for middle and high school. Um, it's aligned with the standards for language and social studies, I want to say. <laughs> so for each one, you could have a week or even two full weeks of learning about this woman, mashallah. For Black History Month, we have an entire unit about Mansa Musa with a lesson plan and worksheets. I mean, I want to say the one I just showed you, full, complete lesson plan, standards, worksheets, all the activities that you need. And the um, Black History Month, we're always looking for content. All of these Muslim uh, figures who have had such a huge effect on, on history, mashallah, along with a full hour webinar telling more about it so that you can benefit from that as a teacher or even share it with your students. For Women's History Month, I know it always comes around in March and everybody's scrambling to find something. Uh, we have a lineup of, of women, Muslim women in history that we can learn from. These are cards that you can print or you can use them as a PowerPoint slide, however you wanna use them in your classroom. Um, some of them are, as you can see, Robota authors who, who we can learn from today in addition to historical figures from all over the world, Bilqis, Maryam, Mother of Jesus, alayhim as salam, Rufayda bin Saad, and so many others. We also have a She Is Me program, which is more information about different women, some of them the same, some of them different women. She Is Me gives you a woman, a Muslim woman from each century who had a lasting impact on, on the world and, and on culture. The next uh, resource that we have now, I've just opened these tabs. Again, I'll just remind you, they're all available here on the first page that I showed you. The Sophia's Journal Teacher's Companion Guide. I don't know if you've seen this book. This is a novel with a character being a, a young Muslim woman who gets stuck in time in Kansas in the time of the, the, the pioneers. So our goal here at Rabalta is to publish novels for our young adults to be able to read a fun, interesting story that they can benefit from, but also that has a Muslim main character or Muslim characters in it. So I've just linked you here to, and I'll just copy this because it's different from the other link that I'm showing. And I put that in the, in the box. These are the books that we publish at Robota, the ones that you might use in your classroom. An Acquaintance is a young adult novel. Brewing Storms is a book of poetry about the spiritual journey, spiritual growth. The Crowning Venture are short stories about women who have memorized the entire Quran. Drummer Girl is a, is a lovely uh, picture book about um, a, a young girl who wants to be the Ramadan drummer girl in her town. Uh, Joy Jats is for adults, Kanye McCann as well. Pieces is also a novel for young adults. It's about a, um, a family that's trying to, to deal with... Sorry, that's my timer. I still have a minute. I gave myself six minutes on my timer, so I still have one more minute. Uh, and also Sophia's Journal, which has that free uh, teacher's guide. I'm so sorry, the books are not free. You do have to purchase them, but the teacher's guide is available for free. Finally, I want to tell you about Africa is not a country. These are cards that you can use, download for free. The whole, the goal of this project was to let everyone know about all the amazing countries in Africa. So you have a card, you can print these out for free. You can use them as flashcards or big cards like the ones I have. And it tells you, for example, 
Africa is not a country. Congo is a country. And here's all your information about how amazing Congo is. Traditions, uh, the food, the languages, the famous people there, natural resources, and fun facts. So you can use these as a fun activity for the kids. Slides, you can print them and post them. We've got one for each. Sorry, my virtual background's messing up my effect here. Ah, one for each of the countries of Africa. Very, very cool resource that you can use absolutely free. Just visit our website. It's all available for download for free. <laughs> You've muted yourself. Just that the I muted myself because I gotta promise myself that I'm gonna stop speaking. I only got seven minutes. I got it. Thank you so much, Sister Iman. Really, some phenomenal resources, mashallah. You know when it's coming from Robata, from Robata, that it is, um, you know, scholar approved, mashallah, and really high quality, filling the gaps. Um, we did research recently with Islamic School alumni. And these are precisely the issues that our Islamic school alumni were saying that they don't get enough information about from their Islamic schools. No more, my friends, no more. No more skipping Black History Month. No more integrating it throughout the year. No more integrating Muslim female scholarship and showing our daughters and sons the role models that they have in our rich history. No more, mashallah. You guys are the beginning of the change, inshallah. Every one of you who are here today are the beginning of the change, mashallah. And we really appreciate all of our partners joining us today. At this point, I would like to now invite our dear brother. Yes, mashallah, alhamdulillah. We do have a brother with us as well, brother Hamim Rahman, who mashallah, I had the pleasure of meeting when he was here in Austin for a hot minute. Um, he is the head of curriculum development at Yakin Institute. Brother Hamim, um, we are so happy to have a relationship with Yakin in which we have been working and talking for several years now and really witnessing the development of this curriculum. We're excited to learn more about it and um, what and where Islamic schools can access um, to integrate into their Islamic uh, studies classrooms and beyond, inshallah. So, salam alaikum, Brother Hamim. Jazakum Allah khairan for joining us. Um, I just want to say this is a great event. Um, the, just the amount of passion and energy that's here uh, at this time is amazing. And that's rubbing off on me. Uh, and it's just amazing to see all this work that's being done. And I think without ISLA, I would have never known about some of these organizations. And so I really want to thank ISLA for giving us this opportunity to get to know each other and to connect us all. And I hope we can continue to support ISLA whatever way we can through Yafin and uh, all these other organizations as well. So keep us posted however we can help. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, I hope to be as um, good with time as everyone else. Oh man, um, oh, I found it. Is that showing for everyone? Yes, it is. Okay, so I just want to begin by quickly uh, mentioning or going over what Yafin Institute is. Yafin Institute is a think tank with a loudspeaker. That's how we like to describe ourselves. Our purpose is to move people to realization that Islam that uh, of Islam that inspires faith, grounds it with intellect, and creates world uh, of doers who are tranquil, confident, and purpose driven. Every day, we work to dismantle doubts, nurture conviction, and inspire contribution. And this is important because the curriculum product that we use or we we design here at Yaqeen uh, essentially tries to do this for our students in the high school level. So here, I'm going to quickly jump into a PowerPoint presentation about our curriculum product. So the curriculum product is, uh, Yaqeen itself is not a very old organization. However, the curriculum product is even newer. It's only been about two years that we started this project under Yaqeen. And it's it's grown a lot. Alhamdulillah, we have a team of about seven of us. And um, what we try to accomplish through our curriculum is to have an Islamic studies curriculum that's active. We don't want one that is very top heavy or one that the teacher is only instructing without having them engage in the material. We want something that is synergistic and critical thinking. One of the problems we saw in a lot of Islamic studies classrooms is that the material that we're being taught is at a very lower, uh, I, I would say a lower cognitive level or lower in the Bloom's taxonomy, uh, only understand maybe, maybe recall, maybe recognize, but we don't have anything that it pushes them to think higher. And what we notice in, in the high school level and in AP classes and other history classes, they are actually doing very heavy cognitive uh, level work 
And so we thought, why not in Islamic studies as well? In our lesson plans, we have both cognitive and affective learning objectives. A lot of Islamic studies is not just happening in the mind. We also want to transform the heart for them to be uh, people who are rooted and confident in their faith and also then uh, practice something that is uh, beautiful with their, with their limbs. And we want the students and the teachers to feel like they're part of a living tradition. I know with the uh, modernity and the rupture from the past of classical institutions of learning, we have this feeling of the past being something very far and not connected to us, but we want our teachers and students to feel like, no, we are connected to this legacy uh, and this intellectual tradition, and we're not standing on grounds that are brand new. It's new in some ways, but it's also connected to a rich, rich and deep intellectual legacy that we hope to connect them to. Each of our units follow an internal process. What we want the students to do ha is have a deeply introspective look at themselves. Uh, so we start with a question. What we saw is a lot of Islamic studies curricula are is divided in the past, at least it was divided between disciplinary boundaries. We had, for example, the theology, then we have fifth, or the, then we have hadith. And we saw that each of these kind of disciplines on their own are, is not relevant, are not relevant to the students. So what we do is we have questions, broad questions that we know the students are asking their teachers. For example, uh, how do we know God exists? How do you know the Prophet Muhammad existed? How do we know the Quran is a, is a living literary miracle? And so on and so forth. And we use these questions to then probe from the different domains of Islamic learning, uh, be it hadith, be it Quran, be it um, Quran, theology or fiqh. And we pull from those uh, deep uh, repositories of knowledge and then we try to answer that question. So we try to answer that question by first having them have a deep introspection of whatever barriers they have to have a, an honest discourse about this topic. So for example, on our unit on God's existence, they have a deep introspection of materialism and the scientism and all the different types of methods of inquiry that kind of are rooted in, in modern knowledge. And perhaps that is a boundary or a barrier that they have to gaining Islamic learning or, or understanding maybe a logical or even emotional plea for the existence of God. So we have a, a deeply introspective look at themselves. And then once they have and arrive at who they are in the present moment, uh, we try to deconstruct that narrative and poke holes at it, make them really uncomfortable in some, in some ways. And that discomfort is important because I think a lot of times we can't even recognize the, the kind of world uh, context that we're in. Um, it's like in David Foster Wallace, like who is what is water? We don't even know the water that we're swimming in. So we try to deconstruct whatever worldview that they have that might be a barrier to their uh, religious learning or faith-based learning or even their identity. And then we try to reconstruct what we feel is an authentically Quranic uh, worldview uh, that is uh, like rooted in the tradition, rooted from these vast disciplines that we have in the past. And the last thing we want to do is after that reconstruction is inspire contribution. It's not enough to just kind of sit in this classroom and, and take it all in, but we want them to actually go out and do something. So each of our curriculum units has this internal process. We have a whole suite of, uh, of Islamic creed uh, uh, units. And so we start with God existence and then we go all the way to uh, very uh, difficult questions sometimes, like how could there be evil and a merciful God? Uh, are we all, do we have free will or is this all deterministic? Uh, and so on and so forth. So we have a whole suite of seven uh, units on Islamic creed and the other avenues that we are uh, still developing in and, and we have one unit here in it's faith in action. And these are our more like practical questions. We're actually working on another unit right now on the question of the, the LGBTQ question from a faith-based perspective. How do we navigate it? What are some of the pastoral and practical elements around it? What are the theological considerations, uh, legal considerations, so on and so forth. So that is a unit that we're working on uh, within this faith in action. And then we also have uh, Islam in everyday uh, life these are um, not necessarily neatly fitted in any kind of uh, religious domain, but are questions that they are asking because of the contemporary context that our students are being brought up in. And so each of our curriculum, it has everything that a teacher can need. We have presentations, we have activities, we have the lesson plan, we have videos, we have all the multimedia, uh, and we even have additional resources for the teacher's own edification if they wanna research more before they learn the material, uh, before they actually go out and teach the material. So we have all of that built into our units. And I, 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 I think it's been advertised in this that all of these curricula are free. So everything I have seen is free. None of this is paid for. We have no paywalls. All you need to do is sign up and we take a little bit of your information uh, and then you can access all of our curriculum units. And what we hope to do in the future is have a whole network of 
of schools who use our product to then standardize what Islamic studies should be or could be at each grade level. Uh, it's a very long-term project. We're just two years in, we're just getting started. So right now we're just build, continue building these units, these building blocks. And then once we have a, uh, a good number of, of units, we hope to then put them together and sequence them uh, and then have a whole curriculum uh, for the whole year uh, for 11th grade, 12th grade, and then standardize that across the US. We're also hoping to um, standardize uh, pedagogy in, in some ways, help the teacher, support the teacher uh, to use our products better and to be better uh, teachers in their classroom environments. And the most important thing uh, I think I want to ask all of you is whoever uses our product to give us feedback. We're kind of working in a silo. We're kind of uh, in our own uh, bubbles in a sense, and um, we're not on the grounds with the students. And so we might think TikTok is cool and we put TikTok videos, but maybe it's something else now and I don't know how to get to that. So please let me know whatever that new a bit of information and maybe they're asking different questions and that we need to kind of address. And so we really want feedback from educators and students who are using the product uh, in the real life. And, and that's very valuable to us. And, and that's something that we, we critically need as we kind of develop our, our product. We don't want to create a fossilized and ossified curriculum that gets untouched. Every two years we renew. And so the first batch of curriculum units that we uh, published, we actually just renewed all of them. And we're gonna do this every two years with all of our units. Uh, so we want something that's relevant and fresh, nothing that's kind of stays in the past in, in some ways. And so we really ask for your feedback uh, as you guys use our product. And so this is our website. One thing I wanted to show you guys is we did launch a new portal uh, that makes it even easier to access. So if you go to yakuya.com slash curriculum, you come to this landing page and you can go to Brass Curriculum Units. And so all the units are here and you just click on one and then it enters you into what we're gonna hopefully build out to be a whole teaching portal. And so right now, this is the first stage. You have to just sign in. Um, and then once you're entered here, all of the units are broken down into lesson plans. And then here, if you just click on any one of these, it'll take you straight to um, the, the activity. And so we try to make it as accessible as possible for teachers. Um, again, whatever feedback you guys can provide us will be really useful. And I'll stop there if I know we're going to go into a question and answer session. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, please let us know. Actually, that's such a good point, Brother Hamim. Jazakum al khairan for sharing. And we're so happy to see the evolution. I remember when Yakin was introduced as a new you know, organization, mashallah. It's only been six and a half years, I think. Um, so phenomenal growth and output, mashallah. We're really grateful for um, the resources and this portal looks wonderful. You're not operating in a silo, inshallah. We're here with you, um, and all of the educators, Isla, ourselves, inshallah. So jazakum al khairan. We will have question and answer after this. We've got just one more speaker, and we're trying to keep you to the hour. We know you've got dinners to prepare. You got to maybe get home. You need to get groceries. So we want to get you out of here as well without compromising any of the information um, that you have joined us for. So. Jazakallah uh, khairan. With not last but absolutely not least, we have our last speakers for the webinar, and then we'll have a quick question and answer. If you want to start even thinking about those, putting those in the chat, that's fine, and we'll go through that. Um, we have Sister Susan Smith, the Director of Operations for the Fellowship of Reconciliation, and Sister Sarah Badawi. Salam alaikum. We're so happy to have you both here to share with us another phenomenal resource. This time, this one is actually available in multiple languages. So this is going to appeal to us on many different levels. Um, Sister Susan and Sarah, Jazakum al for joining. Please tell us more about what the Fellowship of Reconciliation has to offer to our Islamic schools. Assalamu alaikum. It's really wonderful to be with you. Um, I am going to share my screen right now so we can uh, tell you really briefly a little bit about the Fellowship of Reconciliation. And uh, the Fellowship of Reconciliation is the oldest um, peace and social justice organization in the United States. It was founded uh, in 1915, and it's part of the International Fellowship of Reconciliation, which was founded in 1914. And it began with a handshake between um, an Englishman and a German in Germany. And they, 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 they shook hands, they hugged, and they promised no matter what their countries did, i.e. enter into World War I, 
that they themselves would never go to war and they would always pursue nonviolence, peace and justice as a way to achieve what Martin Luther King, who was a member of our board, uh, would call the beloved community. So um, uh, I'm seeing the screen isn't moving uh, for some reason. Um, so I'll just go, uh, there's a slideshow of our history. But since 1915, um, we have done a lot of work. The, the American Civil Liberties Union actually was part of FOR and then went off on its own. Um, we were very active in the civil rights movement, the Montgomery bus boycott. Um, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King as part of our organization uh, invited uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, the Vietnamese monk to come to the United States and he introduced him as his friend and encouraged us you know, no more wars, no more three triplets of militarism, uh, you know, um, uh, um, and, and racism and, and uh, materialism. So with this background now, I'm going to just switch over to this resource that we would like to share with the ISLA community, which is our um, uh, award-winning uh, Martin Luther King and the Montgomery Story curriculum guide. It's a comic book slash graphic novel. And here we go. And it comes in many languages. So um, it's, it's a wonderful resource. For example, you could use it in Arabic studies classes. Uh, we also have it in Farsi for uh, Shia schools. Uh, it's in English, Spanish, Chinese, Vietnamese, Italian. But um, most importantly, perhaps it's, it's in English and Arabic for the Islamic schools. And this curriculum guide is um, developed for uh, educators and communicators to explore and connect with um, this graphic novel. Uh, and here it is in Arabic and English. And I'm going to pass it now to Sarah debolt Badawi, who is the, the curriculum writer, and she will tell you how you can uh, dive into this resource. And just briefly for everyone on this call, and Sister uh, Shaza has been so kind, and Sister Lisa, we, we are very happy to send everyone uh, on this call 10 free copies in English and Arabic. And uh, you can figure out uh, in, in which classes you wish to use them, whether uh, in English language, arts, social studies, civics, Arabic, et cetera. So uh, thank you. And um, Sarah, uh, please, please tell us more about this wonderful resource. Thank you, Susan and Salam, everyone. Thank you so much for, for having us uh, this afternoon. Um, like Susan mentioned, I so I created the curriculum guide to accompany this 1957 comic book, um, which was uh, really an incredible uh, experience for me as an educator. So I'm gonna share my screen quickly and just show you um, a couple of highlights from the curriculum guide. Um, there's, there's a lot to it, but, um, but I'll just give you the short version. Um, so there's a quick introduction, but what you'll find on the website uh, or on the web page of the guide, and, and like Susan mentioned, the, uh, except for the free copies we're happy to send, there's a, the, there's a small charge for the comic books, but the curriculum guide is all free and online. Um, so everything is, that you see here is, is free. Um, and this is just sort of the table of contents of what's what's in the guide. I won't take you through the whole thing because it's too it's a lot. Um, so I just want to highlight though a few points, and then I'll show you very briefly a couple of lessons I I want to just call your attention to that I think may be of, of special interest for you. Um, there's some background material, uh, both about the, the Fellowship of Reconciliation, about the comic book itself, how it came about, how it came to be written, um, how it was used. Um, and, and then there are a number of things in here specifically for teachers just sort of helping to connect it to, to, to standards, both um, the through the Common Core, but also we use the New York State standards since FOR is based in New York, but I think there are many parallels across, across state standards that you'll find, um, as well as some other international standards and sort of themes um, around use of technology from the International Baccalaureate. We really tried to, to provide connections for everyone. Um, there are a few notes uh, to educators and facilitators as well that are just sort of general. But one thing I do want to highlight that we created because 
part of what we had in mind with creating this curriculum guide was we really wanted to to complicate the story a little bit. Um, I'm grateful to to Sister Iman who mentioned the need for other role models. Um, and although, of course, Dr. King is on the cover of this comic book, we also wanted to really highlight the work of, of people we may not have heard of and people our students may not have heard of. Um, and so there is a series of discussion questions that are meant partly as a literacy support to help kids with comprehension, but also some questions that try to help them to dig a little bit deeper and, and question maybe some of the, the facts in, in the comic book even, because we did find some gaps in there that we've tried to fill in in some of the background readings. Um, then the other couple of lessons that I'm gonna highlight are one that we designed with middle school or younger students in mind, and the second with high school students in mind. Um, the first, uh, this young people taking a stand lesson is from among the middle school ones. And here we start sort of with the story of Claudette Colvin, um, who many of you may have heard of, but a young woman who was 15 years old, who was arrested several months before Rosa Parks was. Um, and, and it tells her story as, as a young woman um, in Montgomery in 1955. Um, and, and then uses her story as a jumping off point to show how the many ways that young people in many parts of the world have, have been a force for change um, in order to, to provide, again, some, some different as well, like both from the past and from the present. So, um, so what you'll find in this lesson, besides the story of Claudette Colvin herself, are stories from around the world, um, some from the United States, some from Latin America, as you can see here in Colombia, this young man from Kenya. We included the story, some st information about Ahed Tamimi from Palestine, um, as well as um, Greta Thunberg, but then also going back to the Soweto student uprising in South Africa, a young man in India um, who rescued animals, um, and, and finally Malala Yousafzai. So we wanted to really have a mix of, of, of stories for students to be able to connect with, um, hopefully, and, and explore these ideas about young people as agents of change. Um, the last lesson that I'll sort of dig into a, a, in a bit more detail quickly um, is one that we designed for, for high school students. Um, again, really trying to connect some of the issues raised by the comic book, which includes, I should, should have said before, the comic book includes sort of three parts. So the first part of the comic book sort of tells the story of the Montgomery bus boycott. But then the second part of the comic book really is sort of a, a short history lesson about, um, about, Gandhi's use of nonviolence in, in India and the movement for independence in India as told by Dr. King. And then the third part of the comic book is sort of a, a primer on using nonviolence to confront racism in the United States, of course, in 1957 when it was published, but, um, but there are pretty timeless lessons um, in there as well. And so, so we were really trying throughout the curriculum guide, and you'll see this in other lessons as well, um, to, to make those connections between the past and the present. For me, as my background is a history teacher, and that was sort of always my goal, right? That this, the past isn't sort of this, this distant thing. Um, so this lesson takes a look at, um, you know, many of us know the story of the Montgomery bus boycott, um, but people may or may not know about the ways in which um, boycotts have been used in, in other examples throughout history, uh, both in the United States and around the world, and some of the threats that the right to boycott currently faces today, particularly in the United States. Um, so this lesson uses a number of sources, um, sort of going well beyond the comic book, um, for students to explore um, basically different I guess, aspects of, of boycott, uh, of the idea of a boycott, both as a strategy and as well as, as a protected political right in the United States. So there's a source uh, relating to the Supreme Court decision where the Supreme Court said that, that boycotts are protected. Um, some calls for boycotts from uh, during a, against apartheid in South Africa. 
um, a visual source for students to consider about apartheid in South Africa, um, as well as information about divestment campaigns against South Africa. But then we bring it to the present um, and look at some of the those, those similar calls and strategies that were used to challenge apartheid in South Africa uh, that now many people are calling for in support of Palestinian liberation, but which have been challenged in many places in the United States. Um, so we look at state law, federal law, um, and also some important statements from, in this case, the Presbyterian Church about um, organizations that have em embraced the boycott, divestment, and sanctions um, campaign to support Palestinian rights. So, um, so, and there are many more pieces in between. This is only a quick snapshot, but I think I've gone over and I thank you so much for your time. Please feel free to get in touch with any questions. Thank you yeah, so much. And I'd like to add too, um, and it's not part of this, but uh, the Fellowship of uh, Reconciliation also offers from Sister uh, Sarah, uh, a beautiful uh, summary of uh, how to teach about Islam and Palestine in the classroom. And we all know that that is a tough nut to crack, but uh, Sarah has um, done an excellent job of making that um, uh, manageable and sense according to international law. Mm, thank you so much for all of this important work. Alhamdulillah, it is really, um, I think I've, I'm a bit tempered now from the beginning of the session. You know, there's there's so much to be excited about. There's so much to be hopeful for, inshallah. These gaps that these wonderful organizations, um, you, our panelists, our guests are filling, are really providing um, the teachers, the people with the boots on the ground, with the equipment that they need to equip further the students to um, be able to solidify their dean to be able to understand and, and find role models in the past and current, and to be able to speak to, understand, and inshallah, um, work against acts uh, and, and forces of oppression that are so predominant in society today. And I am just so honored, alhamdulillah, that ISLA gets to be a small part of that just by being able to provide a space and I'm honored by each of you who are here today with us um, to give that space the value that it has. It's through your engagement that any of this matters. And so Jazakallah khairan to all of you. I know that many people have to jump off. For our um, presenters and teachers who are staying, uh, we'd like to now open up um, for any kind of questions that you might have. We'd really appreciate if you put it in the chat or if you do have a quick question that you can speak quickly, um, you can unmute yourself and ask it to any of the panelists who are able to join us and, and stay for this time. I will warn you that there's a two-year-old human on my lap. So if I have to answer any questions, you may <laughs> hear the two-year-old human who's at the moment quietly coloring on my lap. That might be very exciting for some of us. <laughs> yes, and do we have any questions here? I did want to mention one thing um, mm -hmm. about the My Impact Challenge, and that's the project can take any form so long as it has a community impact. So we want to think about equity and inclusion and all the different needs of different communities. Um, so it can be a, a government initiative if there's a problem that needs a government solution. It can also be a charitable uh, project that students are doing direct charity and aid, or it can be a social enterprise if it's a business that students have started that have a social uh, goal or social end. All of those are eligible for the contest. Thank you so much, Sister Rachel, for explaining. There's a lot of um, flexibility in terms of what can be done with that. I think that it's pretty late. And so we know that uh, it's quiet. I'm supposed to give us seven seconds, you know, as a teacher to allow for people to um, ask their questions. All right, so we do have Brother Khalid is asking, is the Yakin curriculum only for high school? Brother Hameen. So the, the product is, is designed to be used for 11th and 12th graders. But we have had teachers use it for younger grades. 
and they usually modify it as needed if they if they, some of the activities are a little too difficult. Uh, we are going to expand, inshallah, into other grades. Right now, this product is designed primarily for 11th and 12th grade, uh, full-time Islamic schools. Thank you, Brother Hamim. Any other questions? Okay, well, I know that a lot of those questions start pouring in once the recording stops. We'd like to um, thank all of our presenters for joining us today and all of the people who power the work that you do. I believe that everybody here is a nonprofit representing a nonprofit. So shout out to all of our nonprofits. We encourage our, um, our members to contribute to support the wonderful, amazing work that you all do. Um, by engaging in your curriculum, as well as supporting it uh, financially, if you're ever able to, inshallah. And inshallah, of course, something that takes um, not much from any of us to make dua for all of those who have joined us today. Um, because I'm conscious of the time that we have here, I'd like to invite Brother Salahuddin Karim to um, conclude our session with the recitation of Quran. He's... Um, a wonderful longtime supporter of ISLA and um, a, a principal, a former principal of one of our Islamic schools and currently working as a social studies teacher. Um, Brother Salahuddin Karim, I invite you to join us. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you so much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, and I just want to say to uh, Sister Shaza, thank you for hosting this and putting this together. And to thank all of the presenters who spoke, I just used the, the word incredible. What I've heard the past hour is incredible. It is, it, I'm just blown away right here with all of I, what I've heard and the great work and so forth. So uh, without, uh, I wasn't invited to give a speech, I'll just recite the surah <laughs> <laughs> right now. I will take more of your time. Audubillahi samil alim mina shaitan rajim. Bismillahi Rahman Rahimi Wala Asri in the Linsan Alafi Hus Illa Ladina Amanu or Amilu Salehat, but to us all be Hak, but to us all be Sabah, or Sodakullah Ulali Yuradi, or Salamu Alaikum Rahmatullahi Tala Barakatu. Jazakum Lokher and everybody, thank you so much and have a great evening. We hope that you take it.